uh, yeah, so great chat to discuss. So Micah Starkas, for, uh, Director of Open Data and Innovation. G'day, how are you? I'm hey, just gonna... g'day. Oh, g'day, yeah. <laughs> We're overflowing the, uh, the uh, Paris scene with Australian voices, Australian accents, are we? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Am I sharing my screen okay? You're doing great. I'll great. jump off. Great. Great to have you great. here. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Um, so usually uh, government officials in New South Wales, government officials and um, public representatives, before, in a, uh, to, at the beginning of a meeting, do what's called an acknowledgement of country. And um, 2020 being what it is and everyone using video conference has become a, a, a quite a... Um, Quite a powerful introduction, so I might do that for for, for now. Um, uh, I'd like to acknowledge country, like to pay my respects to the traditional owners on the lands with which we meet. And so I'd assume today it's all all around the world, and pay my respects to elders, past, present, and emerging. Um, I'm actually speaking from my home, but that's um, Dark and Jung Aboriginal land, which is about an hour north of um, um, Sydney. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to just pay that, that respects. Um, now, today I'm talking about how um, at Transport for New South Wales, um, we opened our data and how 5 billion API hits um, has transformed how we've um, delivered customer service in, in New South Wales. Now, just give it the right context, Transport for New South Wales, I don't know if you know Australia, but we're one of the, in one of the states, New South Wales, um, um, now, we, uh, we're, we're the transit authority that delivers all public transport services um, across the state. But really, it's a, got a focus on getting, getting um, um, our customers, our public, from, from A to B in the mode of transport um, that suits them. We've got a strategic document, um, um, transport, Future Transport 2056. Um, I won't go through that uh, today because that might consume all the time and most of the rest of the day. Um, but the key tenants are that it guides our, we've got a, a, a 50 to $60 billion um, infrastructure program. Um, it's got a focus on developing places, but what it really has is um, front and centre is that transport is now um, a, a, a technology business and it's enabled us to do some, some great things. And, and from this presentation, I hope just to tell a story that I'm, really proud of and how we got to open data and what a great success it is. Um, talk a bit about, you know, the goodness that's probably uh, that's not seen um, um, and really um, for organisations to, to look at open data and how it can um, spawn innovation and, and outcomes that you wouldn't expect and probably talk and a bit of boring government speak at the end, but, you know, bits that get me excited and maybe some of the pitfalls that we went through um, that you might want to avoid. So where it began for us in open data, back in the dark days of 2012, you know, I was um, in my early 20s at the time, um, um, we were in a, on a, on a multi-year, multi-million dollar program to upgrade our journey planning website. So not dissimilar to what Google Maps is, that experience, but it was our, our website and our mobile app back in 2012 and it hadn't been updated since um, for, for a good 10 years. Um, and, uh, you know, with big IT programs, we were very focused and, you know, it was just going over budget and over time. And what happened is we, um, we were publishing our websites, in, uh, our timetables in PDF on our, on, our, on our websites. And what we found was this, um, this app developer, a young, a young uni student, was scraping the website, scraping the website of the timetables, packaging it in, a, in an app, and customers were downloading it um, with Figure. So back in 2012, you know, we did the usual reaction, and that was we decided to take him to court for, for breach of copyright. Um, um, luckily, there was a bit of collective wisdom um, in seeing that we had this big program of work that I was um, leading at the time, and here was an app developer that had solved that customer problem uh, without really any input from us, and customers were loving it. And so we thought and took the path to what do we need to do to, to make that data available to more app developers to see what innovation um, can be done. And that was back in 2012. We had a hackathon that was, you know, it was, it was a big education piece. It was a new word back then. Um, had a hackathon and we had a couple of apps um, uh, which called TripView and um, um, Skedgo, Trip, the, the TripGo app. 
And they went on to be great, you know, downloaded millions of times, millions of times. Um, it took us a while, but we got, um, we got the websites updated. But really, it drove us forward. So, and, it, and I really saw at the time, you know, I, I really had the feeling that my, my, my career in leading big programs was going down the toilet where, you know, when how can we possibly survive if you can see these app developers that can pop this stuff out over the weekend, giving them, a, you know, a bit, of a bit of a hackathon, a bit of, a bit of Diet Coke and some pizza and look at, look at what they can do. What was really confronting for us is it took us, it took us another um, four years to think, you know, how, what can we do to open this data more? It was, in 2016, we sort of industrialised the process of making our data open. Until then, we were just providing it to a couple of these, these app developers. Um, and then it still took another, another couple of years for the likes of Google and our own products to get up to the same standard, and the same stature as those, those products. So it was a really real turning point for, for, for transport for New South Wales. Um, where's that taken us now? So it was in 2016, we launched our uh, um, open data program and, it could, and, and it's totally, um, totally blown any expectation we had at the beginning. Um, right now today, even after, even after four years, um, the data is just getting consumed at a great vigor. You'll even see on my title slide, I had 5 billion API hits. That's when I put the synopsis in and before to, to get accepted to, to give this presentation. So what's happened now um, in, in just a matter of months, we've actually um, surpassed 8 billion API hits for the different types of data that is available. And this slide's got great, great numbers on it that we're very excited about. But the good figure that, 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 that really makes me proud is that, um, is the 42,995. Now, luckily I've got this little bar here that's covering it, registered users. Now that is the community. That is the, the number of registered users that, have, that access, that have accounts and access data on our website that, we, um, that we've learned is what gives it. It's not about making data open for us. It's about that community and making sure that they've got the right focus on the, the transport problems we're, we're trying to solve. So how we've done that is rather than being a, a traditional open data organisation, and the key, sorry, just one key point on the previous slide, the open data hub, it's not for static data sets, it's actually an API gateway. So we we, we did have a little bit of smarts to think uh, when we made the investment to make this open data hub, that it was to look to the future and APIs was, was the future. Um, but for us, it's not about making the data open. It's, a, it's about having what we call innovation challenges. And that's where we put out, you know, uh, put out our challenges to, to, to industry, to, you know, who is in the community, app developers, researchers, academics, software companies. Um, we, we encourage them to, to look to the data and see what solutions they can come up with by giving them um, um, use cases or stories to solve for us. And if they can solve those use cases and pitch to us a good solution, um, we, we offer seed funding to, to bring those products into, into reality. And we've, we've tackled a whole range of different transport options from th those original real time apps right down to, you know, how can congestion be better managed, um, right over to mobility as a service and how to bring the disparate different types of ways of traveling together with public transport like cycling. So it's really driven um, uh, driven by our strategic agenda and the outcomes we've got to achieve. How do we put them partner with, with the industry to bring those ideas um, um, forward? Oh, excuse me. Um, so really what, like, and this is the real testament for uh, our, our, our success, just the, 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 there is a great diversity in the products that we've, We've uncovered. This is a just a, 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 a small sample, just cut from our open data website of our um, um, showcase showcase apps. And if you went through them, you'd see a whole range of different um, transport related apps. But what's key is these um, are all third parties. We don't own these products. All we do is support them and um, partner with them, so they can be go on and be their own individual successes. Um, but the proof's in the pudding that like, like over, over the last um, um, half decade, there's been 8 million downloads of these apps um, in, in New South Wales. Um, so we're very, very proud of that. And that's the, the real test for us. This is how we've transformed the, the customer landscape in that they're not, the customers aren't necessarily relying upon us to get the services into their hand. It's about us enabling 
how to get the services into the products that our customers actually use. Now, beyond the headline successes, um, this this is something that uh, you know, when we did launch the open. So, apart from the, uh, the 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 nervousness I had in my career back in two thousand and twelve, when two thousand and sixteen um, came and we launched the Open Data Hub, um, that was on a Thursday at a big um, big forum. We had Steve Wozniak talking. Um, it was about setting the future technology roadmap for for transport in New South Wales. So it was on a Thursday that that event was. And when we got into work on, on Monday, we had an email from an app developer who um, quite just total elegance in the simplicity had taken the data that we've provided and made a, a real-time map that could show all the different transport services in real time, their location, where they were going. Um, now, that was quite quite a, a profound moment. There was a big program of work that was trying to pull this together. And what it showed to us is that just in the time that we've been working on making open data available, there's a whole generation of really data literate young people that are just the, the next generation. So if you look at me, I've got grey hair. I'm, you know, I'm not, re, not at retirement age, but I, I can see it over the horizon. But the next, the new generation of really data literate technically proficient um, um, entrepreneurs is an area that everyone should be considering how to how to tap into. We have actually, we did for a little while while I was a student um, engaging as an intern. He's then gone on to win awards for transport uh, globally for getting capacity information into, into apps in a very simple, simple fashion. He's also gone on to um, develop our COVID response dashboard, which has really set New South Wales on the, on the right path in managing the major event of 2012. The key for us is without going to um, an open data platform and really engaging and looking after our, our community, we would never have had access or insight or even at the, the time of the day from um, smart individuals like this. Um, and this is something that I, I just love so much. And I, and I heard this when I first started investigating how to, to, to make our transport data open. But for us, that our mentality is we've got 43,000 registered data users. If we got, and you know, they're all, they're all already got a certain level of um, expertise and capability. So, but if we can get them to focus just five minutes on, on one of our transport problems, that equates to a really smart person working for, for 90, 90 working weeks, and that's the sort of energy you've got to got to tap into. So sometimes it feels like a bit of a, a, a moonshot, but it really does deliver profound and accelerated outcomes um, simply by sharing your data. Um, we've matured a lot since um, 2012. Um, I've got more grey hair, um, but more importantly, we've really industrialised the whole process now. So we've got a transport digital accelerator in New South Wales, and that's actually an off-site shared working space in one of our one of the um, 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 one of Sydney's um, premier um, shared working spaces and that allows um, physical when, when COVID's over over but you know, the, the, the physical opportunity for people to come in and experience and pitch ideas and you know in a, in a collaborative co-working space to, to develop solutions so we've really sort of taken the, the, the program forward and it keeps delivering us quite quite profound outcomes. Um, now, our success has driven government locally to actually make opening data um, one of the key tenants of the... the so being in government, we're an, we're, we're an open government. There's something called Gipper in New South Wales, which is um, Government Information to the Public um, um, Act. Um, so essentially that was to make government open and transparent, but now there's a requirement for public participant for us to um, proactively encourage public participation and sharing of data so that we can continue to deliver these innovative and accelerated outcomes to take it forward. Um, now, look, it, it, I wanted everyone to come away with um, a couple of what would you, if you, know, if you want to be an open data uh, organisation, and I'm sure a lot, you, you need to take it, um, you need, really need to step in there and get, get it happen. It's not about opening data just for um, data's sake. You've got to really prioritise and get outcomes from that sharing of data. Um, um, other pitfalls to avoid that we, we've learned, the privacy, it's not about you know, protecting privacy or scrubbing data and making it open. There's got to be a real contemplation for 
you know, if you really start it now, it's going to be out there. And what could that mean into the future? We've overcome that challenge with um, privacy protecting APIs for our uh, for our Opal, which is our electronic ticketing system. Um, just a, a privacy protecting API so that we can put that data out there, which basically um, measures or gives gr great and deep insight as to the, the travel patterns of the New South Wales um, public. But you know, with with this, you know, basically it comes out synthesized. Um, um, but yeah, you've got to focus on privacy now and into the future. Um, there's a lot of, especially in large organisations, you've got to understand the commercial and public interest risks. You can't just put, release data. You've got to be a bit sensitive to what that the story that actually does tell. Um, you've got to have a good focus on the effort it takes to actually get data out there, especially in this realm of APIs and, and real-time data, that you've got, to, you've got to have a level of commitment to making um, that, that data st um, be available ongoing. Um, and you've got to be aware of the technical enablement, especially getting through different, different firewalls and the costs of actually keeping the data up to a standard or to the standard that would rec be required into the future. Um, and this is the, the last slide. So for us, this is our latest um, innovation challenge, actually. It's called Make Data Great Innovation Challenge. What we're finding now is there's such a proliferation of data out there um, that it's getting hard to navigate through and actually link up in any sensible fashion. Um, but we also believe there's good insight tools um, and, and techniques that we need to, to harness to actually draw the right the right um, ways of being able to search through the different data sets and bring them together in a sensible fashion. Um, so maybe next uh, next conference I'll be able to report back to you how that's um, that's progressed. That's um, we're we're looking for pictures um, next week actually. Um, and that's the end of my story. Thank you. That's fantastic, Micah. Um, the, do you have a link for the for if people do want to be able to join in that innovation challenge? Do you have a link? Um, I will share it somehow. I didn't put it in there, did I? That's right. there's, so there's the stage chat. So maybe after this, if you don't mind putting it into the stage chat, that's great. I mean, this is amazing. I cut my teeth on open data in Australia and at the time I was speaking with government departments. This was pre-2008, so there wasn't any open data and I would go into a meeting and the people would say before you sit down the answer is no yeah that's right no no we I think uh, we we, uh, we run a pretty jovial engaging sort of program um, but we've become hardened to the wall of no but you know I think for for us we we had early and quite profound success so we've um, we've we've been Based with that, like it could have gone, it could have, totally could have gone a different way. Um, but even that first reaction back in 2012, I remember being in the meetings. Here's a little app developer that's taken it upon himself to, you know, scrub, scrub a website. And the first sort of, you know, first reactions, a fist on the table saying, let's take him to court. <laughs> it's crazy. Sort of, I mean, uh, it's a great story, though. I mean, it's a really important story to be sharing and, uh, you know, great, great for you to, um, uh, be honest about that was what the environment was like and look how much we've changed in, in those 12 years. This is fantastic. Yes. The, so then for me, the next thing, so I've been doing some work, we covered some of the um, New South Wales and Australian examples in the European Commission's API framework for digital government, which I was working on. Um, one of the things we see is that the next level of uh government APIs is about demonstrating that they're not just a technical concern, but they're a policy concern as well. And to do that, we need to be able to demonstrate the value that APIs are creating. So, for example, with transport, route plan, when you can plan your travel, that reduces CO2 emissions by 25%. So yeah. is, is, is there, where is it at? As I know this is a new field, so I don't expect it to be um, uh, a long, but um, the where is it at as far as being able to demonstrate those kind of values from the uh, from API use? Wow. Well, like, yeah, unfortunately, it's got to do with the data. I think that it's hard. Those measurements are really hard, and especially for us. Like, we're, we're federating the data and achieve it's, um 
So I haven't got a clear clear answer for you. Like, you know, but getting those measures in place is probably the first and hardest challenge um, to, to begin with. Um, um, a lot of our outcomes are driven by customer um, um, customer sentiment, and that's you know that's the that's the headline figure that's really sort of crystal. Like, apart from the great success and the number of downloads, the satisfaction um, with customers um, using public transport in New South Wales has gone gone through the roof, and it is because they can interact with it so easily. Um, um, but yeah, those those other those other challenges. They're first and foremost um, w- with us as an organisation, um, getting those measures uh, in a way that we can actually deliver against them in the data is is, is very difficult. Um, well, um, and I think fundamentally our products and getting the data out there, it's not about changing customer behaviour. That's really hard. We're not at that sort of frontier where people rely on their phone to choose their journey, customers, it's customer information still, people still pick the journeys that they want. So I think, yeah, at, at, at the core, it's changing customer mindset to actually drive that that outcome. Yeah, uh, can I ask you to just go on mute while I ask my question, just because some people have said they're getting a bit of an echo. Oh, great. great. Um, okay, cool. The, so, yeah, I mean, that's a new frontier, that whole area of them being able to build out the causal models. But, I mean, it's interesting that you're saying that because then you're also talking, and this is from the, I think you called it the Gipper model, but it's like the, it's also about, you know, in 2020 with all of the challenges this year and the work you've done, the team's done even on the COVID dashboard, it's showing that, um the APIs have a role in building trust with government because even in a simple thing like transport, you are then trusting the data that you're receiving from the government in order to be able to better plan your mo- your mobility. Okay, your turn. Yeah, 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 ab- ab- absolutely. Like, and it's the, 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 like APIs just offer so much more flexibility. Like, and the, the simple example is how do you release sensitive data sets that are really useful? They're the like, yeah, you know, we're, we're in a realm. Let's agree, we're in a realm that everyone uh, everyone wants someone else's data. You've already got your data. You don't, you know, you're not worried about that. You want someone else's. So, the APIs form that ability, that handshake ability to trust what you know to trust when you hand something over. They're not going to. I don't know, take credit card details, personal information. So that, that offers you a whole level of security. And I think we've moved on. APIs isn't, 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 isn't a dark art anymore. It's the, it's the staple. It's, it's the benchmark for how to share data. There's, we're past the realm of just handing over big dumps of data these days. It's not, that's not useful. APIs is, is, is the way forward. And it's, that's in your title, the five billion. So, I mean, that's an important metric as far as showing that there is that demand, isn't it? Oh, a hundred percent. Like, and it hasn't tapered. That's what's been really surprising for us. The more, um, the more, the more use it gets, the more it seems to. We get more users. We've just had more and more registered users over over the years, and that's what's been really surprising. It hasn't sort of. Um, slowed down, and, that, and I think that uh, yeah, the working hypothesis is is we're enabling services, insights, and the data to get into the products that customers use, and it might almost be invisible. Like now, we're informing decisions of different sort of product sets or research. Um, it's not it's not just journey planning products anymore that we're that, that we're we're feeding, um, and that's where it becomes powerful. And like APIs provide the power to actually integrate a whole load of different different data sets. I know I'd love to see with uh, food security that you could somehow match sending people to areas where there was the cheaper products that are uh, the cheaper food products that are available just before their expiration date. So it's avoiding food waste, you know, but you can see how that could all be a future possibility because of the APIs. And it starts with transport quite often. Uh, absolutely. And I think, yeah, it- it, to me, to us, especially with the community and being able to gauge with, uh, you know, people that haven't looked at your problems before, what you're doing is you're asking new people the same question because, you know, big organisations, you know, you, uh, you know, the strategic agenda for a lot of organisations doesn't change dramatically, but if you're asking the same people the same question, 
you know, you shouldn't be surprised to get the same outcome, you know, or the, or the, or the same answers back. You need to be able to exp- you know, broaden your horizon to ask a new audience. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll ask you to leave the stage now, but this was a great discussion, really fantastic, and congratulations on the um, the examples that you're able to show from. So if you can see from a government um, a audience, you can see that government is able to be able to I- implement these APIs. So um, it's just amazing that, um, you know, if there were a government that's sort of, you know, um, traditionally slow-moving, um, needs to organise themselves, has multiple stakeholders involved, and they're able to unlock the value from data via APIs, then there's, um, then why aren't you? Okay.